Are you tired of running around in the Forgotten Realms or is your homebrew setting just not making any sense anymore? Or are you just looking around for a completely fleshed out new world full of really dangerous dangers and really weird magic? Maybe you should look into the Midgard world book. This is Midgard and yes, this map is delivered with the book. First of all, I have to say, Cobalt Press, you have done it again. Not only with the awesome artwork in this book, not only with the awesome way of writing and the way of using humor in this book, not only the awesome world building, but also the sheer amount of content in this 500 pages thick tome of sheer awesomeness. Yes, you heard it correctly, this thing is merely 500 pages thick and like some other books, this one is not filled with all kind of page filler stuff. No, it is a completely fleshed out world and the moment you open this book, you have a feeling you're stepping into a world that is already living. Does it cost $50? Yes, it does. Is that a lot of money for a Dungeons and Dragons book? Well. Yes, actually it is, but I bet you cannot point me towards any, any campaign setting that has this amount of quality content in it. And I'm not even talking about the map, the big ass map you get for free. By now you probably realize that I am a big fan of Cobalt Press and I just want to address the fact that I am not in any way paid to shove this stuff in your faces for you to buy. No, every time I open a book from Cobalt Press, I am amazed by the sheer quality of their writing and their artists. I have been trying to do a video review the way I've been doing them uh, since the start of my channel, but this thing is just way too thick to be doing that the way I was doing that before. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to skip through this book a little. I'm just going to point out some of the stuff I find amazing, going to give you uh, some information of what the book actually is. It is amazing, but uh, I've said that a million times by now. So let's just open it up. The first pages are really amazing. You get this white perfect no, I'm just kidding uh, there is no reason for these white pages but anyway you open the book and of course the first thing you see is some amazing artwork that we know from Cobalt Press Cobalt Press has some of the most amazing artwork yes I'm a fan of Cobalt Press um, then you get of course a full word and, and this is in the form of some kind of mini story type thing that really sets up the atmosphere of the Cobalt Press, uh, sorry of the Midgard campaign setting, also some artwork uh, that sets up some of the atmosphere of the Midgard campaign setting. Then you get another full word which is just basically a forward and then it gets interesting because they've split up this book into 12 sections. Uh, the first one being a overview and history of the um, Midgard uh, world, the regions of Midgard, the people of Midgard, uh, the the time time and season seasonal calendar stuff like that. Uh, ley lines will which I will get into a little bit la later. Uh, just some secrets of the world, how the world is set up, and it is it is actually a very uh, big part of this book already but then it gets more interesting because 10 of these chapters so from chapter 2 to chapter 11 are all different kinds of areas in the Midgard campaign setting and this is where this thing really shines. Cobalt Press does a really good job of creating 10 really really different parts of the same world that somehow feel connected. So they are completely different. For example, there is the uh, Wasted West, for example, there is the Northlands. Uh, the Southlands is a desert type environment where they literally have a seas of, of a sea of, of sand. So there's literally boats sailing through sand. That's how the, Thin the sand is right there. Uh, they have a place where vampires rule. They have the your basic uh, medieval type uh, place. But I'm just going to skip through it, and you can see for yourself how amazing it is. Of course, uh, first thing uh, I will talk about um, section 12 later when we get there. First thing, overview and history. Some amazing artwork again, and they do a really good job. Here's the map. 
again and again you get this big ass map this is like really big foldable map thing you get it for free uh with the book which is amazing um but here is, is it again and smaller um you get this timeline you get a lot of text so if you're afraid to read up on some of the stuff this might not be your cup of tea but um it is a world book so it is not People don't read world books from beginning to end. People actually read the parts that they're interested in and then start adventuring in those parts. And again, this artwork, amazing, amazing stuff. Some of the history, some stuff that happens uh, when you go uh, to the lore and the canon of the world. Um, yeah, this is just uh, the races, some of the races. This is, by, by the way, uh, this artwork is... <laughs> Also in the Midgard Heroes book, and it is actually a race you can play. It is a halfling, what do you, what do you call, I forgot the name, some type of halfling. But this artwork, this for me, is one of the most amazing pieces of artwork from Cobalt Press. Hands down. My opinion. Um, so there's swords of tieflings, or swords of halflings. But the information of these... Um, uh, creatures, these 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 races you can play are actually in the Midgard Heroes Handbook. So if you are a player, you there's not no reason for you to buy this book. This book is actually totally meant for the dungeon master to run in the Midgard campaign setting. Wow, this first part is already. Uh, then we get to the second part, which is the Crossroads City called Zobek, Zobek, and the Crossroads City. The cool thing they did was the first part of the world uh, you read about is this very familiar uh, medieval Dungeons and Dragons fantasy setting you are used to from playing the games of Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, there is this basic city that has a river, that has horses, that has knights, it has a political system, uh, there is magic, there is wizards, there's all that jazz. Of course, there's a mini map, of course. This is what this book does really good and maybe maybe this one of the flaws of this book for some people uh, at least it is for me is that there's maybe too much information i mean you have zobak the crossroads city you have this basic information about it then you have more information about it then you get this entire political system with its flag its ruler there's a npc they can encounter there's all that information there's a map with all the districts which are all uh flashed out in this book well most of them are flashed out in this book uh so there is more information on the districts all that stuff is in here the kobold ghetto for example which is a um part of the world i already used for an adventure with my uh awesome players there's the gear district where gear forged which is an amazing uh race from kobold press well from midgard campaign setting uh the gear forged are like the the um uh how do you call them those other gear forged type things in the official Dungeons and Dragons stuff. I forgot the name because I'm recording and when I'm recording I always forget stuff. I don't know why. Uh, there's there's stuff like that. There's like these clans, um, all that information. And then they get into the area around. These are the gear forged, by the way. You can play them when you buy the Midgard um, Heroes Handbook. They're actually a playable race. Uh, then they get into the areas around the city, like uh, around Cobalt Press, uh, around <laughs> around Cobalt Press, around uh, Zobek, and they actually everything around Zobek is is also covered in this book. For example, the area northwest, I think, of uh, Zobek has been uh, under the ruling of dwarven clans. For a while now, a very, very long while now, and even those clans are all, as you can see, all fleshed out in this tome. They are all written about, so if your player, players encounter some kind of dwarfs, you can really open up this page and say, yeah, he is from Hammerfell, and then you can get this information out to your players. What do they know about Hammerfell? Um, so these clans, they also have a type of weird this is really interesting they have this type of weird um political political war going on between them where they get together every year and as long as they pay a certain fee they are allowed to keep waging war against each other if one of them ever stops to pay the fee 
they stop they stop fighting and but that's the thing they are too proud every clan is too proud to stop paying the fee so that means they are at war for like always and there's another kingdom that is surrounding um Zobag, there are some wild people uh, surrounding Zobag, there's all that stuff and as you can see we're already at page 85, yes this book has more, almost 500 pages, so I'm just going to skip through this very very quickly. Then there is the Dark Kingdoms, the exact, exact opposite of your normal world, this is a world ruled by vampires, uh, werewolves, uh, weird priests that do weird stuff with people. There's actually three kingdoms um, called the Dark Kingdoms uh, that are here. I think this is more up north of the worlds. Uh, doesn't really matter. Yeah, you get the same type of thing. You get politics, you get maps, you get artwork, you get leaders, you get NPCs, you get um, castles, names, you get pff, gods they use, population numbers even. There's even freaking population numbers. There's important uh, characters, there's all that stuff. I mean, same as in, in the previous sec... Pre bleh, same as in the previous section, there is... All this stuff just going around, just oh, yeah, and there's also a lot of information about Baba Yaga, who is, by the way, one of the coolest villains in the entire game of Dungeon Dragons. And my players uh, try to defeat her, her stats are not in here, I had to improvise them, but actually, it's, it's very cool. Also, uh, something I have to state is that every part of this book has like this mini thing where you get adventure IDs. You don't get a fleshed out adventure because that's not the point of a world book. You get adventure IDs. For for example, for to defeat Baba Yaga, uh, you get adventure IDs. But you also can get adventure IDs uh, for people who get into Zobek or into the Dark Kingdoms themselves. Um, yeah, and all that stuff is in here. Of course, there's centaurs, you get IDs. To do centaur type um, stuff, quests. This keeps freaking going. Where are we? I just have to. I'll have to look at the index right now because wow, this thing is big. Uh, let's see, Ro Rothenian plane. Then there's yeah, there's this Rothenian plane. There's this dragon empire. Maybe we just open it up at dragon. Oh, we're already at dragon empire. It's so it seems. This is the dragon empire. So yeah, this is again a different empire altogether. There's Dragonborn who are being helped by kobolds and all that stuff you you are used to when you're ta when you talk dragons. You of course talk kobolds and goblins and everything. Um, same thing. Also, again, some great artwork. I'm so amazed by the artwork of Kobold Press. I'm sorry for that. Um, Let's see, what do I want to talk about? Uh, let's open something very cool. Something I find very cool is Southlands, for example. Um, yeah, the Southlands. I know this is a really weird way for me to review a book, but this is the only way to show you guys the vast amount of stuff that's in here because it's so freaking big. The Southlands. Okay, the Southlands are, again, completely different and they are what you expect. There's this... Aladdin meets Dungeons and Dragons meets maybe uh, the mummy movies type vibe going on here. Treasure chests with scorpions and, and um, stuff like that. And something I find re really cool and I don't know exactly where it is. Yes, there's more maps of cities. Yes, there's more political systems. Oh, this one. This one. I really need to show you this one. There's actually, there's actually ships, like I said before. There's ships sailing a sea of sand. So these ships can move with the wind through a sea of sand. So this this there's this big ass sorry there's this big city that is surrounded by sand and the sand is so loose that that there's ships designed to row and to sail through them. I find this idea so cool. They worked it out. They flashed it out again. Then there's the Seven Cities, which is uh, somewhere north, is uh, south, in the south of Midgard, right above the Southlands. And this is really your typical medieval 
stuff. Of course, there's Dungeons and Dragons stuff in there. There's Cobalt Press stuff in there, like the big ass boars and and. But these are just seven cities that are at war with each other constantly. There's like these kinds of cities. Uh, this looks a bit like Italy, so. Imagine Italy with seven cities in it, so there are seven cities that are comp all, always at war with each other and they don't want to stop fighting and uh, yeah. And again, if you're interested in doing a adventure with the setup of the seven cities that don't want to stop fighting, just open the book here or read this part of the seven cities. Don't go and read the entire book. I know a lot of people get scared when they see these kinds of... Uh, of books and they're like do I have to read all of this no you don't have to read all of this that's what it's for it's for oh this looks cool I'm gonna read this and then you just start adventuring and there's no problem um, so yeah all of these parts are actually different realms there's the shadow realm where there's more like bear folk and stuff like that uh, running around like really weird creatures um, I I think so and then there is the last section, which is also a big section, and that's Pentheon. Um, Pentheon. Pentheon. Um, everything you need to know about the gods of Midgard. I'm just going to take a look if there's more. Uh, feats, drugs. <laughs> okay, there's even information on drugs, magic items, stuff like that. Uh, Pantheon, yes, so all the gods, all the information the gods, your players can worship, uh, your NPCs can worship, um, these gods are all, <clears throat> again, fleshed out really good, there's all this, this artwork, I don't even know how they freaking created this book. Okay, I have to admit, they recycled some artwork from other books, from their own other books, but... Most of it, for me at least, is new and fresh and it always seems to have the same type of vibe going on, the same grayness to it. I don't really know how to explain it, but it's just all these gods, they're all in here, it's all in here, all in here. Then there is even spells in the back for your uh, villains to cause or your NPCs to cause. There's like the, these are like the secret spells. Your players do not know these spells. If your players buy the Midgard campaign, uh, sorry, the Midgard Heroes Handbook, they will not get these spells. So these spells are for the Dungeon Master only. There are secret spells, which of course there's a lot of them, um, which is great. So yeah, I know I have been uh, just rambling about this book. Also, there's uh, some magic items normally. There should be some magic items. Somewhere in here are magic items. Yeah, here are some magic items. These don't have artwork, but some magic items for the, for the world. I know I have been rambling about this book. I have been just uh, talking about it, just skipping through it, but I have been trying to do a normal, again, I have been trying to do a normal review of it the way I've done it before, but there's just so much in here. So what I've decided to do is just ask you guys, if you're interested in this book, and if you want to get any information of, of, of this book and you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments uh, below this video because I will answer them gladly. Uh, also, of course, hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you didn't do that yet because it really helps me out a lot. So that was my review of the Midgard World Book, a very thick book, so I had to do it a little bit differently. Anyway, if you have any questions about it or for, for any other project I have covered in the past, make sure to hit me up in the comments below. Also, if you want to see me continue doing what I'm doing right here and right now, make sure to hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because it really helps me out. And if you really want to see me continue doing this, you can support me on Patreon and even if you support me on Patreon there's a good chance you get to play in a Dungeons and Dragons game with me as your dungeon master so make sure to hit that link of my Patreon in the description below and I hope your inspiration may guide you.